Through the changes that life will certainly bring you while you are on your pilgrimage, I want to ask you today, how much faith do you have that God is in control of all things? Again, I ask you today, how much faith do you have that God is in control over all things? Yesterday, I had the great privilege of being able to celebrate and being able to recognize another year of life. As you have heard me say before on several occasions, I am a man that don't mind being off by myself. I'm a man that don't mind sitting off to myself and having a bit of peace and quiet so that I can think and so that I can be able to reflect on things. This past week, as I reflected over my life, I thought about this last decade of my life and I thought about how long a decade can actually feel, but at the same time, a decade is a relatively short period of time as well. But with that being said, there are many things that can happen in a decade. There are many changes. There are many ups and there are many downs as well that can happen in that span of time. And so I thought about life and I thought about the constant changes and I considered that life is a lot, a lot like being out on a lake or being out on a sea. As we will see here today from this passage of scripture here in Mark's gospel, like a sea, we find that there are times in life where things seem to sit still where things seem to be at peace. Mm -hmm. But at other times, it seems that things in life are always in motion. What I mean by that is that it seems like things are always shifting. Things are always changing around us and changing in us or to us as well. Mm -hmm. Yet as much as things shift and as much as things change in life, we know this truth to be certain. This truth being that God is always with us, that God always remains the same, and that the Lord is always working on our behalf as well. So what I want to do here today is I want to focus in on life. Mm -hmm. I want to focus in on our pilgrimage through life And I want to ask the question today about your level of faith. Mm -hmm. What is your level of faith in God while you are on your journey, while you are on your pilgrimage through life? Mm -hmm. What is your level of faith in the Lord? How patient are you with God when life brings many shifts your way? When life begins to change all around you, how patient are you with God when it comes to those changes, when it comes to life itself? Now, here in the fourth chapter of Mark's gospel, looking at the 35th through the 41st verse there, we see that the disciples and Jesus are on a boat And we'll see that they are crossing the sea from Galilee and they are making their way. If you look in the fifth chapter of Mars gospel, you'll see that they were trying to get to the country of the Gadarenes. Mm -hmm. I want to share with you today that we are a lot like the disciples in that we are on a boat and that we are crossing over a sea. We are crossing over the sea of life. Mm -hmm. And I believe that you and I, that we are trying to reach a certain destination. And we hope that that certain destination 
is God's heavenly kingdom. I don't know if you hear me here today. Yeah. Now, as the disciples and Jesus crossed over to the other side, scripture, it points out to us there in the 38th verse that Jesus was at the stern of the boat, mm -hmm. the stern of the boat being the rear of the boat. Yeah. Yeah. And we are told there in the 38th verse that Jesus had fallen asleep on a pillow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, while Jesus was divine, we must remember that Jesus being God in the flesh, that he dealt with some of the same things that you and I deal with in the flesh. When I teach or preach from this passage of scripture, I like to liken how we are like the disciples and how we go through life, how we are going through life on a journey and how God is with us while we are on that journey. In this case, while we are crossing the sea, trying to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want you to understand here today is that unlike Jesus, who happened to be asleep at the rear of the boat, God in our life today is not at the rear of the boat. Mm -hmm. He's not at the stern. God is also not asleep while we are on this journey. You see, God is the captain of this boat. And being the captain of this boat, I want you to understand that God is at the bow of the boat, meaning that he's at the front of the boat. The reason why he's at the front of the boat is because God is the captain of this boat. And you and I, we are his passengers mm -hmm. as we are crossing over to the other side. All right. All right. Now, we are told here in this recording of events mm -hmm. that there in the 37th verse, we'll see that as they made their way across the sea, we are told that the weather began to change. Mm -hmm. The sea it may have been calm and at peace at a point in time, but as they crossed over, we are told that a windstorm arose on the sea. Mm -hmm. Now, scripture, it suggests to us that this storm was a terrible storm. Right. Yeah. We are told that the waves of the storm, that they rose and that they began to beat against the boat. Mm -hmm. And not only did the waves begin to beat against the boat, but we see that the waves began to fill the boat up with water as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the disciples, when Jesus was in a position to where if the waves continued to fill the boat up with water, mm -hmm. the boat would sink. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, to speak figuratively here again for a brief moment, Again, you and I, we are on a boat and we are trying to cross over to the other side. Yeah, yeah. Both the weather and the water of the sea as we cross over to the other side, mm -hmm. it is often changing. The weather is often changing and due to the weather, the waters of the sea as we cross over to the other side, they are often changing as well. For one moment, the, the weather and the waters can be calm. Mm -hmm. But in another moment, the weather and the waters can be treacherous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In other words, the weather and the waters can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Too dangerous for us to even be able to make it over to the other side. All right. All right. So in order to be able to make it across to the other side... I want you to understand today that it may require us and it does require us to have a great amount of faith right. to be able to endure the seas, mm -hmm. to be able to endure and to be able to make it over to the other side, which again, I believe that all of us, we hope and we desire that the other side is the Lord's heavenly kingdom and not some other bad place. All right. Come on. Now, with that in mind, I believe that there are three levels of faith that are shown to us throughout Scripture that I have touched on in a recent Bible study. Mm -hmm. 
that I want to touch on here in my sermon today. And with each level of faith, though, I'm not going to dive too deep into each level of faith. You can do that in your own time in my Bible study. Mm -hmm. I believe that there are attached at least a couple of subgroups or sub levels to each level of faith. Now, in the first level of faith that we see in scripture, we find that the first level is a level of no faith. Now, that might sound strange at first, but. The truth of the matter is that everybody starts out this at this level of having no faith. Nobody is born having a great amount of faith. <laughs> we are born having no faith. Mm -hmm. and so there is a level here where we have a level of no faith that can be broken down into two subgroups or two sub levels. Mm -hmm. On one level, we find that there is a level of fully convicted non-believers mm -hmm. that have absolutely no faith. Right. And then on another level, there are those who are like newborn babies that are in need of spiritual nourishment. Mm -hmm. Now, the fully convicted non-believer is one who has absolutely no faith as they have completely rejected and have rebelled against the Lord. They, as fully, co uh, fully convicted non-believer, they have absolutely no faith, meaning that there is no repentance, meaning that there is no turning to God for this individual. Mm -hmm. Then on the other side, again, there is that newborn babe. There are those who are simply wandering around and they are in search of something. Mm -hmm. They are in search of that spiritual nourishment. Yeah, yeah. They're in search of something that they believe or need to believe in their soul, in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Again, we all start out as newborn babes that are in constant search and in need of spiritual nourishment. Mm -hmm. And Peter, he suggested as newborn babes that we should desire the pure milk of the word that we may grow thereby. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, some will give this pure milk of the word a taste and see. Mm -hmm. And they will see that this pure milk of the word is good. All right. All right. And so because it is good, these will continue to give this pure milk of the word a drink, if you will, to speak figuratively. Mm -hmm. Those that continue to drink the pure milk of the word and genuinely love what they are drinking, they will begin to grow. Mm -hmm. And they will begin to have just a little bit of faith, if you will. And so we come upon this next level of faith, if you're following along here. Mm -hmm. And in this next level, or the second level of faith, we find that the second level of faith is having a little faith. All right. Now we remember that Jesus once said that with faith the size of a mustard seed, mm -hmm. One can move mountains. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus said that with a little faith that nothing would be impossible through having just a little faith in him. Mm -hmm. Now, those of a little faith, I want you to understand today that they should not stop drinking that pure milk of the word. They should continue to drink the pure milk of the word mm -hmm. so that their faith can continue to grow so that they can reach the next level of faith. Right. And we will see that the third level of faith is the faith that has grown to be strong. The third level of faith is having a strong faith. Yeah. Those who are of strong faith have a faith that is unshakable. Mm -hmm. They have a faith that cannot be deetered. They have a faith that cannot be stirred. In other words, right. they have a faith that is unmovable. Oh, yeah. 
Jesus said that those who hear and do his sayings are like a man who built his house on a rock. And, and listen to this. Listen to what Jesus said here. He said, when treacherous storms moved against that house, it did not fall. The reason why Jesus said that that house did not fall was because it was built on a strong foundation. Oh, yes. That house, it was built on strong faith. Oh, it did not move. It was not shaken. All right. All right. It did not fall over because of the storms of life. Yes, yeah, for us to be able to traverse the sea of life uh -huh. through its constant and sudden changes, all right, all right. I again believe that having strong faith is required. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you'll see why I say that is the case here today. All right. So I feel I must ask this question again. Mm -hmm. What is your level of faith in the Lord? What is your level of faith in God? Mm -hmm. Are you of no faith? <laughs> All right. Or do you have a little faith? Mm -hmm. Or are you strong in your faith in the Lord? All right. All right. Now, before you go answering that question immediately, I hope that you will take time to give this question a serious thought. Mm -hmm. because we must be able to answer that question truthfully. We must be true to ourselves, All right. especially yeah. when it comes to journeying across this sea, mm -hmm. especially as it comes to growing, going through life. We must be honest. We must be true to ourselves when it comes to our faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now, again, as we go through this scripture here today, we will see that as the storm moved in, we we'll see that it seems that the disciples were in great fear of their life. Right. Now, we aren't told exactly what the disciples did as the storm moved in. Mm -hmm. we, we aren't told their exact actions here. But this event, it is recorded in both Matthew and Luke's gospel as well. And, and we are able to put their emotions. We are able to, to get a sense and an idea for their feelings here in the three synoptic gospels here. In both Matthew and Mark's gospel, we are told that the disciples felt that they were going to perish. Yeah. We can see that specifically here in the 38th verse here again in the fourth chapter of Mark's gospel. We can see that over in the eighth chapter of Matthew's gospel. Mm -hmm. In Luke's gospels, the disciples, they are described as feeling like they were in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. They felt that their lives were in jeopardy. And again, we are told that in the eighth chapter of Luke's gospel, they felt like they would perish. Mm -hmm. So, so taking those thoughts and those feelings in mind here, scripture seems to suggest to us that the disciples were in a panic, all right, all right. that they were in great fear because of this storm, mm -hmm. because of what the waves were doing and because their boat was filling with water. Mm -hmm. They knew what would happen if their boat was to capsize. Right. They knew what, were to, what would happen if they were to fall under. Yeah, yeah. So the feeling of hope mm -hmm. for the disciples, I want you to understand today that the feeling was fleeting. All right. That feeling of hope, hope being faith, mm -hmm. their, their faith was fleeting. Mm -hmm. Again, this is confirmed for us when we see Jesus ask the disciples after they woke him up here in, and again, our key verse here. In the 40th verse, we'll see Jesus. He asked them a question about what was going on. Yeah. Jesus says there, he asked them there, why are you so fearful? Mm -hmm. Is what Jesus asked them. Again, Jesus was with them. Yeah. I imagine God asked us this same question today as we, we cross over the sea. Mm -hmm. He asked us, I believe today, why are you so fearful, Cynthia? Mm -hmm. Why are you so fearful, Betty? Why are you so fearful, Andrew? I believe he asked us this question. All right. 
He then asked him there in the 40th verse, how is it that you have no faith? Again, in Matthew and Luke's gospel, Jesus is recorded asking the disciples, why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. He asked them, where is your faith? I believe that the disciples was of little faith at this point in time in scripture. You see, at this point in time, the disciples were of little faith. And that little faith, it was fleeting. It was scurrying. It was running away. Yeah, yeah. You see, this was not long into Jesus's ministry. Mm-hmm. And the disciples, they had not been following him all that long. Mm-hmm. All right. So what I want to point out here about little faith is that while having a little faith can move mountains and while having a little faith uh, can make the impossible possible for us here mm-hmm. today, I want you to understand that there is another truth that we must also be aware of when it comes to little faith. Mm-hmm. You see, little faith, it can be easily shaken. Mm-hmm. Little faith, it can be easily stirred. Mm-hmm. In other words, little faith, it can be moved. Mm-hmm. Little faith that can be moved is yeah. faith that can be rattled. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, sir. So with their little faith, I believe that the disciples were in a panic Mm -hmm. due to the sudden changes of the weather on the sea. Mm -hmm. In this storm, even though the Lord was with them again, Jesus being God in the flesh, their little faith made it hard for them to be still. Mm -hmm. Their little faith made it hard for them to have any faith. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. See, little faith can become fearful. Mm-hmm. And fear, we should understand, can make it hard for us to be able to overcome. All right, all right. Fear can make it hard for us to be able to persevere. Fear can even make it hard for you to be able to focus. And we need to be able to focus in this life. You need to be able to focus while you are crossing this sea of life. You need to be able to focus while you are on your journey. You need to be able to focus while you are on your pilgrimage. The most unfortunate thing about having little faith is that Little faith, it can quickly be turned into having no faith. It can be taken away from us. You see, this is especially not good when it comes to journeying through life. You know, this is, I want you to understand, this is not being said to shame anybody who has little faith. I say this today to encourage those of little faith to keep on growing in their faith. This is to encourage those to continue to grow strong in their faith in the Lord while they are on this journey of life. Mm-hmm. Because life is rough. Oh, life is hard and we need the Lord, especially in the times when life becomes too much for us to bear. I don't know if you hear me here today. Amen. You see, I went through some things this past decade of my life mm-hmm. and I know this to be true. Everybody needs God. Nobody is too strong to make it through life by their own might. We need the Lord's might to be able to cross this sea. I don't know if you hear me here today. You see, our faith, it should not be fleeting. We should always strive to be calm. We should always strive to be at peace. You see, the mind that is at peace is a mind that is full of faith. All right. It is one that can focus. It is one that will be able to endure. It is one that will be able to persevere. And because we are able to persevere and endure, we will be able to succeed through all of the ups 
and through all of the dows, through all of the many changes that happen all around us and to us in life. All right. All right. Now, the honest truth is that we're all going to have our moments where we have panic. We're all going to have our moments where we worry, where we have fear as well. But in those moments of panic, we must learn to go to God. As I preached a couple Sundays ago, we must learn to go to God in prayer, especially in those moments when our heart is troubled, when our heart is stressed, and when we have panic. We yes, must sir. learn to go to God in prayer. Yes, sir. We cannot be overcome by the waves of the sea. Oh, yeah. 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 You see, I believe that we should always be prayerful in our life, but we should be even more prayerful to the Lord when the winds suddenly begin to change mm -hmm. and when things are beyond our control. You see, there are some people who believe that everything is in their control. That is an ignorant thought to have, mm -hmm. and I say that plainly. Mm -hmm. Now, though they may have been in a panic, we will see here in Scripture today that the disciples did just that. Mm -hmm. They did get around to going to Jesus, who again is God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And we see here that they sought Jesus' care, mm -hmm. and they sought his protection mm -hmm. in this storm. I believe the one and important thing that the disciples believed here and that is shown to us here today is that they had faith in Jesus's power mm -hmm. in his authority. They had faith in his control. Yeah, yeah. They believed in his power over that which they certainly was powerless against. Mm -hmm. Do you have faith in the same manner? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the Lord has power over that which you are powerless against? Yeah, yeah. In our key verse here today, we will see Jesus show his might, his authority and his control over what is uncontrollable to us. Mm -hmm. As we see here in the 39th verse, he stood and he looked out at that raging sea. And when he stood and he looked out at that raging sea, I want you to understand that Jesus had no fear. Amen. Jesus was not shaken. Jesus, he was not stirred there as he looked out at that raging sea. As he looked out at the waves that was crashing against the boat and was filling the boat with water. We we'll see here in the 39th verse that Jesus then moved on the behalf of the disciples as he said to that raging sea, peace be still. Amen. So with just a few words, we see that as sudden as the storm on the sea arose, yeah, yeah. we see that the winds, they suddenly changed and we see that the waves, they died down. At Jesus's command, we are told that the wind ceased. We are told that there was great calm. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. We are told here that God was in control. All right. Amen. All right. Now, the disciples, they had run into a storm mm -hmm. that they had absolutely no control over. Mm -hmm. It was a storm that was beyond them. Yeah, yeah. Yet Jesus again was unmoved. Mm -hmm. Jesus again calmed the storm with absolutely no struggle, with no trouble. Mm -hmm. As you and I know, there are many things in life that are beyond our control. All right. All right. Yet anyone that thinks that they can control any and everything, they are thinking foolishly. Amen. They are thinking Amen. ignorantly. There are things that are far beyond our control and we must be humble enough to admit that. God, on the other hand, is in control over all things. And I would think that we should trust in the Lord when it comes to that which we have no control over. But the question that we must again answer today is, do we trust the Lord 
to have control over that which we cannot control. Do we trust the Lord in life? Do we trust the Lord with our life? Do we trust God when the weather changes on the sea as we are going across the sea, trying to make it to the other side? See, we often fear change. We often fear life because we do often finally get to the point where we realize that we don't have control over most things in life. So we fear change greatly because of our lack of control. Yet the one thing that you and I do have control over in this life is that moment when we choose to go to God in prayer. Will you go to God? Or will you not go to God? You could control that. Mm -hmm. Nobody else controls that. You control that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Consider that when you go to God in prayer, mm -hmm. I want you to consider that you suddenly can take control over all that once seemed uncontrollable to you. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody may ask the question, well, how is that possible? How do, how do I all of a sudden, how am I all of a sudden able to take control? Mm -hmm. Well, the Lord, we should understand, is in control over all things around us. Whether those things are visible or invisible. Of this fact, Paul said to those who are uh, the Colossians there in the first chapter of Colossians and the 16th and the 17th verse, he said to them, for by him, all things were created that were, are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, or the thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Paul said all things were created through him and for him. And he, God, Paul said, before all things and in him, all things consist. Yeah. It's what Paul said there. Mm -hmm. So I want you to understand today that we are praying to the one who is in control. That is the Lord. Because we have placed our faith in God, I want you to know today that you should be confident. You should be confident in his control. You should be confident in his power. You should be confident in his authority as well. Jesus, he calmed the mighty storm on the sea. And I tell you today, I believe that Jesus, I believe that the Lord calms the storm on the sea for all of us today as we cross over to the other side. If we go to him in prayer, I believe that this is how the Lord moves for both you and me. And I believe that he moves like this on a daily basis for us. You see, when you go to God in prayer, the Lord will move for you. Mm -hmm. And I tell you today that you will have truly taken control over life. Mm -hmm. You will have taken control over your life yes. if you have gone to God in prayer. Amen. Don't mock Amen. prayer. I tell you today, Amen. prayer is very powerful Amen. if you believe in the Lord. Yes, sir. Now, knowing that God is in such control over both the visible and the invisible, mm -hmm. that is the known and the unknown, and knowing that God moves on your behalf today, I tell you that it should give you confidence to be still in the storm. Mm -hmm. It should give you confidence to stand firm to stand strong, to stand steadfast, and to stand at peace in the midst of life, in the midst of all the changes that life may bring. When a storm arises on the sea, you ought to be able to be still and have faith in God, our God, who has all power and authority and control over all things in his hands. Oh, yes. You see, this is very important to me to share with all of you today. Mm -hmm. 
It is very important for all of you to me to come to this understanding, especially as a child of God, that though we are crossing this treacherous and dangerous sea, Mm -hmm. God is at the helm and that God is in control. The reason why this is so important to me is because I have seen how afraid that many of us can become because of the changes that go on all around us and because of what life may bring, what life may throw at us. Mm-hmm. I've seen how we can let the shifts and the changes of life flood us and ultimately sink us in our spirit, in our soul. I don't desire for us to be sunk in our spirit and our soul because of the changes that life may bring Mm -hmm. or because of the curveballs that life may throw at you Mm -hmm. because the Lord is always with us. And because God is always moving on our behalf, I want you to understand today that you have absolutely no reason to fear life. You have no reason to be afraid of what life may throw at you. What, what may arise on that sea. You have no reason to be afraid. Just as we saw in our Sunday school lesson today, Jesus has prayed for your keep and your care. Your prayer today for your keep and prayer, it also is good as well as the Father has heard it and as he will keep you in his care and move on your behalf as well. Yes, sir. See, a lot of times our impatience with God can make handling the changes of life incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. Our impatience with the Lord can often make life, therefore, difficult itself. Mm -hmm. You see, we often display little faith and we often get frustrated and upset at life while it seems that the Lord is allowing a storm to rage on instead of that storm ending swiftly. We begin, we begin to feel like God is taking his precious time and that, that the Lord is moving slowly instead of moving swiftly on our behalf. Mm-hmm. But we must remember what Peter said when he said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness. Mm-hmm. Slack meaning to be slow or meaning to be sluggish. God is not slow. God is not sluggish concerning his promise. That is you. Mm -hmm. You see, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is what Paul wrote to the Romans in his letter to them. To the Romans, Paul said in the eighth chapter of Romans in the 28th verse, he said that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. All things being something that is good or something that we may consider to be bad, Again, Paul said that they work together for good to those that love the Lord. See, again, it takes strong faith for the believer to come to this very conclusion that whether good or bad, God is working on their behalf. It takes strong faith to come to this conclusion, to be able to accept it in our hearts today. You see, we will never understand how the Lord moves, especially when we consider that his thoughts are far higher than our thoughts. See, oftentimes we actually pray for God to move on our behalf. And we seem to forget that when God moves on our behalf, that things are going to happen for us, that things are going to change in our life. The best thing that you and I can do is learn to be still and have faith in the Lord. The best thing that you and I can learn to do is have patience with God in our life today. See, I often preach about patience and I would tell you that it has taken me many years to grow to the point of patience that I have reached today. And yet my patience is still not complete. My patience, it is still not full. I don't know if my patience will ever be full. I don't know if my patience will ever be complete. I don't know if there will ever be a time where I'm not trying to rush the Lord when I'm not frustrated or when I'm not upset with something in life. But it is good for us to try to have patience. It is good for us to be still and have faith in God. In the book of Isaiah, the Lord, he spoke through the prophet and he said, do not remember the former things 
He said, do not consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, the Lord said. He said that it shall spring forth. He said, I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Again, I want you to understand today that God is in control over all things. As shown to us in scripture today, God is in control of both the subtle and the immediate changes of the sea. If God is in control of the subtle and of the immediate changes of the sea, imagine just how much control he has over the changes that affect you who are special. You are a treasure in his eyes. God, as I said in our Sunday school lesson today, God loves you. God cares for you. He will not allow you to be harmed. He will not allow you to fall into the sea. Again, I want you to understand that the Lord is in all control today. Mm -hmm. If our sea dries out and turns into a barren wilderness, God is still in control and he will make a way out of no way for us today. He will make a, a road there out of the river for us as well. The Lord will make rivers in a dry and desolate desert so that you and I can be able to make it one more day. Again, we have no reason to fear in life. Though things are always changing around us, let us remember that God remains the same. He is the same today as he was yesterday and will be forever. God has constantly brought us across the changing sea of life. He's constantly brought us through all of our trials, through all of our tribulations, through all of our storms in life, and he will continue to do the same for us as well. So let your faith continue to grow today. Let your faith continue to be strong today. If you are a newborn of the faith, I pray today that you desire the pure milk of the word so that you can continue to grow in your faith. If you are of little faith in the Lord today, I pray that you continue to desire the pure milk of the word so that your faith can continue to strengthen today. And then we who are strong in the faith in God, I pray today that even you continue to desire that pure milk of the word so that your strength can continue to strengthen, so that your strength can continue to mature as well. The genuine believer's faith in the Lord should get to the point to where we are so strong and confident in him that no matter the circumstance of life, we will not be shaken, we will not be moved, we will never fall back down to having no faith in the Lord. We should never be moved because again, God is always in control because again, God is the captain of our boat. Amen. 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 Amen.